Milotic is a majestic beast that's almost always built in a way that uses its solid defenses or special attack, but I intend to switch that up. Milotic was meant to be a special counterpart to Gyarados. They have the same base stat total, but are opposites in a lot of ways. However, Milotic also gets access to Dragon Dance, and we can push its base 60 attack and 81 speed to the absolute limit. And we can use Hypnosis paired with the Blunder Policy Held item, which doubles our speed when a move misses, or if it hits, get a free opportunity to set up Dragon Dances. People are now caught extremely off guard by the hilarious threat that is Stab Waterfall or Triple Axle for coverage, and Offensive Sweeper Milotic can go crazy. So when thinking about how they made Milotic basically as a counterpart to Gyarados, I thought to myself, what if I used Milotic like a Gyarados? With less than half as much attack power, will it be easy? Probably not. But is it a good idea that'll likely win me a lot of games? Also probably not. But I'm willing to give it a try, so let's go ahead and jump into it. Alright, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Ancient Ass Scyther as I decide to toss out the Smeargle. Now, Smeargle being back is really fun. He gets access to some new moves, which means some new toys, and we're here to kind of paint a picture of that ass. So, uh, Jackson Pollock over here, I'm going to actually just end up going for the Spore Turn 1. Now, I actually outspeed, which means that this thing is not going to be running Jolly, and it's actually going to be an Adamant Cleaver, but I'm able to put it to sleep, which is super nice, because now this puts me in a spot where I can kind of do some of the stuff that a Smeargle's here to do. So, essentially, this Smeargle is a Hazard's Machine, baby. I actually, funnily enough, I have the Stone Axe, which is Cleaver's signature move, so... Not only using it on him, but actually getting a super effective hit and setting up the Stealth Rock. That's, uh, that's what we're here for, baby. So I'm able to set up the Stealth Rock as dude's over there just taking a nice little nap. At this point, I'm kind of reluctant to set up my Sticky Web or even go for some spikes. Mostly just because I see that Snowflake they have on their side of the field. Uh, and that thing is definitely going to have Rapid Spin. But at this point, I'm like, you know what, fuck it. I'm just going to go for the Sticky Web here. While they likely are going to be able to bring that thing in and spin away the hazards at some point. I'm feeling like, you know, at least... It, Pollock doesn't have much else to do here, alright? Let him have this. I can now go for the Ceaseless Edge. I've now gotten on my Stealth Rock, Sticky Web, and a layer of Spikes, and we're feeling pretty good out here, as, of course, now they do wake up. And we can see the reason why this thing's running plus attack nature is because it actually does have the Trailblaze, which gives him a nice little speed boost. Sadly, you know, Smeargle is a frail little fella, and, of course, I'm not going to be able to take two. They can then outspeed me after the boost, finish me off with the Stone Axe. He's like, hey, this is actually... This is how you're supposed to do it. And uh, it kills me and sets up the Stealth Rock. And, you know, Smeargle did his little Smeargle best. But this does at least allow me an opportunity to switch into whatever I like. I'm feeling like potentially Gary Trace can come in here and try to set up. But it's probably just a bit too early. So I'm actually going to end up going into the Hisuian Electrode. And what this thing does is just be extremely fast and uh, go blast it. I can actually just end up going for the Leaf Storm. I do outspeed this thing even with that Trailblaze boost. And with the choice specs, that is going to knock out the cleaver. This thing does not have the greatest special defense of bulk. Uh, so down goes uh, that thing, which is actually, it's good to see that thing gone. It's kind of a, a pretty annoying mod. So this now opens the door for whatever they want to switch in. And this is the asshole we're talking about. The Cryagonal of here is, of course, going to have that rapid spin. And is going to get rid of all the hard work uh, that Smeargle did set up. However, what I'm going to do here is try to make the most of this opportunity. And then I can actually get Hitmonchan in basically for free here. And then I can force this thing out, decide to potentially set up a Swords Dance. But overall, try to get some, you know, momentum on my side. So they do go for that Rapid Spin, of course, that's going to give them a Speed Boost. But more importantly, get rid of all the Hazards. Uh, but at this point, you know, this Snowflake does not want to be staring in the face of uh, Baby Groot over here. So I'm thinking at this point, their switching is likely going to be something like the Chandelure. So I'm actually going to go for a Risky Maneuver here and actually make a Double Switch. I'm going to predict them to go into the Answer to Hitmonchan which is going to be that chandelier, and I'm going to actually go right into the Milotic. So, they do actually end up switching out. They do go into the chandelier, which is actually amazing. And Hitmonchan is like, surprise, bitch. I'm actually going to get the hell out of here. I end up switching into the Milotic, and now we've got this thing right where we want him. So, a lot of the time, these things do carry the energy ball with potential to have the Terra Grass. However, I'm going to go for the Hypnosis here right off the bat. And the funniest thing about this situation is Milotic has a base speed of 81, where Chandelure has a base speed of 80. So I literally outspeed this thing by one point, uh, which is actually amazing. Because they do commit the Terra Ghost, they want to reduce the water weakness here. But I actually move first because I'm the speediest Milotic on this side of the Mississippi. I do actually land the Hypnosis, which... Uh, in this situation, it's actually kind of either or would have worked for me. If I missed, I get the blunder policy that I'm faster than their entire team. But in this scenario, landing the hypnosis is always great because 
that allows me a nice little open door to click the dragon dance and this guy's like oh shit what what is this milo tick and what the hell is this thing about to do to me what it's about to do to you is give you the sweet sweet release of death we have to go for that dragon dance there because it now makes us fast but also it gives us a, a nice little boost to our shit base 60 attack so one of the only real benefits of using Milotic like this is that with its natural bulk, it's actually able to set up and take attacks in the process, which is why at this point, I decide to just go for a second Dragon Dance. If I want to pull off a sweep here, I'm definitely going to need at least plus two attack. That's going to essentially double my attack and speed as they actually end up switching into Yan Mega. Now, this is a pretty fast little fella over here. However, with uh, my speed doubled, I'm actually going to be able to outspeed, and I can go for the triple axel here. I can try to roll the three attacks, and luckily, my low tick is the absolute go. We're able to hit the three on the triple axle, which takes care of the Yan Mega. And that might be like the only time my low tick has ever outsped and O-code a, uh, a Yan Mega. So that's actually uh, kind of amazing. And at this point, we're just going to see how far we can get this my low tick to go. So one of the good situations is that they've already committed their Terra, which is amazing for me because now uh, going into something like the Iron Moth, they're basically forced to take a super effective waterfall. And I still do not trust this thing's ability to waterfall its way out of a wet paper bag. So I'm actually going to end up going for the Terra Water. I'm running Terra Water just to get that much boost in damage. Because listen, we, we sometimes you need a little bit of extra help here. So I put the fountain on my head that is going to boost my water stab here. I outspeed, go for that waterfall. And the only thing that can save this thing now is a Focus Sash. However, they are not going to be Sash that does take care of the Iron Moth. And uh, this Milotic could not be... <laughs> in a better spot. This is going exactly how I pretty much planned it, and uh, it's actually kind of amazing. So, now they go back into the Sand Allure, they're down to three Pokemon left. I, of course, do outspeed this thing. It is still asleep, uh, which likely could wake up on this turn. However, you know, with the Water Terra and two Dragon Dances, uh, a Waterfall it does take care of it. Basically, I'm running a Gar I'm, I'm essentially Gyarados over here, but three, so I'm a little bit better, I guess. Anyway, down goes that thing. Two Mons are left. One of them being Cryogonal is great because this thing does have good special bulk, so it ordinarily would do pretty well against my Milotic, but not this Milotic, buddy. I am actually a Gyarados. I decide to go for that Waterfall, and I uh, hit it on the physical side, which does take care of it. So <laughs> down goes the Cryogonal, and now they are down to one Pokemon left, which is actually going to be a pretty ideal one for me because it is the Minior. He comes in looking like a delicious uh, Lucky Charm in a, in a bowl of cereal, and... Uh, my Lutic fucking loves Lucky Charm, so I can just go ahead, outspeed this thing, hit him with a Waterfall, and uh, this thing has absolutely no chance. Even with his, his little shell up, you're, you're not going to have a chance there. So that's actually going to finish off the game, and uh, I gotta say, that could not have been a better scenario for this exact My Lutic set, uh, but a perfect showcase nonetheless. And uh, Sweeper My Lutic is an absolute threat, and actually kind of hilarious to use, and like kind of works because... We like really do get the element of surprise on our end, which uh, is pretty nice. So we're not going to quite stop there because I do have one more match with the Goat Milotic. And let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so first of all, I apologize if throughout the video my voice has sounded different. I feel like I'm getting sick, but I mean, in general, what is even sicker is this Milotic, so it's fine. Anyway, this time I decide to lead off with the Fortress. My opponent leads off with the Gallade. And this puts me in a spot where I'm like, hey, this is actually mostly fine. I can just set up my Stealth Rock, do my little Walnut thing, and uh, just have a decent time. As they decide to just go for that close combat right from the start, it is going to break my Sturdy, but also they touch my Pointy Helmet, so that feels pretty good. And I'm able to get up my Stealth Rock for free, which is great. Uh, at this point, I don't really imagine this thing stays in with its defense drops. It knows it doesn't kill me with another close combat here, and a Gyro Ball probably does at minus two. So I decide to go for the Volt Switch here, as they are going to actually end up switching out, which is amazing. It's, of course, always good to catch a switch on a pivot move. So they decide to bring in the Serra Ledge. This thing comes in, does not enjoy taking the Stealth Rock, but also I can get that Volt Switch and get the hell out of here. And at this point, I'm thinking, is it is it time already to, to get the Milo Tick going? It potentially... It could be, and I figured, you know what, might as well just go for it here. I go into the Milotic mostly just because I know that this thing likely doesn't want to stay in here, and it's going to give me a free opportunity to either go for the Hypnosis and put something to sleep, or get that Blunder Policy and allow me to uh, be super fast in aerodynamic-ass Milotic. So, they decide to actually end up switching out. They're going to go into the Ogre Pond. Now, Ogre Pond, uh, just base grass form, is definitely their best answer to my Milotic, but I actually end up hitting another Hypnosis. This lady can see freaking everything out here. Got that 2020 vision. I feel like I should go buy a lotto ticket because uh, I'm two for two on Hypnosis. 
But at this point, I decide, all right, it's, it's time to go full Gyarados on him. I am going to let them burn their turn of sleep. I can then go for that Dragon Dance, and that is going to allow me to outspeed this thing, but also potentially put me in a spot where now a Triple Axel should be able to kill this thing. And uh, if it wakes up, I'm going to have a bad time. However, I'm able to go for that Triple Axel, and it is just going to be enough to knock out the Ogre Pond, which is actually pretty crazy because that thing is definitely the one mon on the team that easily stops my low tick uh, and down it goes we didn't even have to take any damage now the good news was i could have potentially taken an attack there um, but my low tick does need all the health <laughs> they can get uh, for situations like this they decide to go into the flutter main and this is actually going to be a booster energy flutter main it is going to be plus speed which is ideal uh, because with no special attack it get two hit kaomi with a moon blast but at neutral, the crazy part is I actually take like around 30% from a Moonblast, so I decide, you know what, I'm going to go for another Hypnosis. They decide to go for that Moonblast, does a nice little chunk, but also drops the special attack, which is kind of funny because it's like, I don't even need it, baby, I'm physical. And I also land another Hypnosis, which is kind of insane. I actually wanted to miss that one just to show off the Blunder Policy and then be able to outspeed it next turn and then go for my Terra Water Waterfall, but... It turns out life is pretty nice when you just hit Hypnosis. So I decided to go for the Terra Water Waterfall here. It actually, it's a misplay. I, I should have likely gone for another Dragon Dance just because of the fact that uh, they have not taken their one guaranteed turn of sleep. So I could have gotten up a free Dragon Dance, but uh, it, it, listen, it's fine. Milo Tick is an absolute beast. We don't even need to dance no more. I can go for a Waterfall here. Uh, they do go stay asleep there, of course, and the Waterfall is going to end up knocking this thing out. Uh, and down goes the Flutter Me. We've taken care of two of like the biggest damn threats in the game. And now it's just time to see how far this Milota can get this time. So one of the things that does worry me is the Walking Wake. Now I've taken some chip damage here. I know that I can take like an attack or two from this thing. And I can go for the Triple Axel at only plus one. However, it is going to be a two hit KO. Uh, but we're going to be forced to take an attack here. I'm like, hey, this is mostly fine. I can actually just end up likely knocking this thing out with another Triple Axel here. They go for the Dragon Pulse, and uh, we are bulky as absolute hell. We're able to take it super nicely. I go for the Triple Axel, and I miss. I forget that that move has a pretty high chance to miss. It's actually hilarious because that actually activates my Blunder Policy in a way that I did not even think about. Boost my speed right before I die. So <laughs> while we were able to take down uh, both the Ogre Pond and the Flutter Main, my low tick does prematurely hit, take a little death there. But that is actually fine. We've poked some solid holes in the team. I've also even got some really good chip on the walking wake and now it's time to see if we can pull it back with what we have left so i decide you know assuming electrode actually looks pretty nice here with that amount of chip that i've got off on this thing i should be able to knock it out with a, a specs pretty much anything so i decide to just go for the t-bolt they don't have a ground type that can switch into this and uh, i do easily outspeed because this ball gets rolling quick as hell boy so down goes the walk and wake. He's not going to be walking on shit now. And uh, that's actually, a, a, again, a very scary Pokemon to see against us. So uh, letting that thing go down is amazing. Now they decide to go into the Serral Edge once again. This thing does potentially have priority with like a Shadow Sneak. It's not going to quite be able to knock me out. Uh, and I can just go for another T-Bolt here. And with that Stealth Rock chip, easily going to be able to take care of the Sharp Boy. And uh, they are running out of threats. However, this is, again, another very big threat. Sneasler is uh, probably one of my least favorite Pokemon to play against because with an un unburdened set, this thing is it has the potential to easily sweep my team if it, uh, if it can get that off. So I decide to switch out here. I'm thinking potentially they go for like a fake out uh, with a normal gem boosted to allow it to activate that unburden. So I decide to just go into the fortress here. Turns out they actually dire claw, which is ends up working out as well. I look like a genius. It does not affect me. And now their best damage is going to be something like a close combat. Um, but they're going to have to uh, take some rocky helmet chip and with a potential to have a defensive drop, a gyro ball could potentially kill here. So they do get that defense drop, also get poked by the old spiky helmet, uh, but it does actually end up being the white herb variant with the unburden. It does activate its unburden, however, Fortress is an absolute beast. I'm able to just knock it out with the gyro ball, uh, even without the minus one defense, and that is solid because, again, that thing could have easily just ate my team, uh, and now we're in a pretty solid spot here. So the final Pokemon is going to be the Gallade. Uh, while it does have the ability to just knock out the Fortress like a damn punching bag, uh, that is totally fine because they're forced to, you know, go for that close combat. I'm thinking maybe this thing's like Choice Scarf 
which is a lot of the time I feel like what you see with Glade in sharpness sets these days, but they go for that close combat, down goes the fortress, and at this point I just decide to go into the Hisuian Electrode. Kind of a fun interaction here, a modest Hisuian Electrode has a speed of 200, whereas an Adamant Glade with the Choice Scarf would be 198. So I decide to go for that Chloroblast, uh, I do actually end up outspeeding, it would have to be Jolly and Scarf to outspeed me, uh, but I just started blasting, takes care of the Glade, and that is going to be the end of the game. So I thought that was just a super fun match. And again, another showcase of the threat that is physical Milotic. And let me know if you guys did enjoy. Make sure to leave a like on the video. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.